Hello, everybody. Um, my name's uh, Michael Pritchard. I've uh, been part of this uh, PHP uh, meetup group for probably coming up to about two years now. Um, so I've done a, a couple of talks already. Um, so to introduce me, as many people here I can see uh, that uh, I haven't met before. So I've been interested in computers um, since a very young age. Uh, since I was uh, 11, and uh, my uh, uncle actually bought a, a ZX Spectrum 48K. Uh, a few years ago, I was uh, involved in a, a Real Racing 3 wiki, where I would play a little racing game and update some of the, the data on the, the, the website, and everybody would input all the information. And I became an admin of uh, that particular site, uh, along with a, a team of other people. So I was uh, very much involved in, in front-end uh, development. Um, and I introduced things like uh, uh, variables so that the tables of data could be uh, highlighted. Uh, and a couple of years ago, uh, I, I put in a, a brand new system called RedCap. Uh, I was working in, in Prince Charles Hospital then. And uh, this system uh, was a, a website. It was a, a PHP system. And it was from there that I got uh, really back into uh, my interest in, in programming. And uh, last year, I actually had a, an interview in March last year, uh, just as the, the lockdown was about to take fold. And uh, I actually started the job in July uh, last year. So I, I am now a full-time software developer in um, health education and improvement Wales. So my talk today uh, is about uh, my experience of Docker. Uh, it's not a beginner's talk. Um, there are plenty of online resources to talk about uh, beginners tutorials. Uh, the uh, documentation that Docker actually produces is very good. This is a, a more uh, problems that I've experienced with Docker and the Docker environment and what I've uh, done to overcome those particular problems. So this is probably a little bit of an unusual way to, to present. Uh, as you can see, this is a, a blog that uh, I wrote last uh, month and um, it's available online uh, in, on, on my website. So uh, I'll show you that uh, at, at the end. So there are plenty of online resources uh, as I said, to do with beginner uh, tutorials for Docker. This isn't one of those. This is going to be going on more in depth. Um, so the problems, the main problems that I've had over the last uh, six months have been to do with file permissions. So I actually, when I changed jobs last year, I had to uh, buy my own laptop uh give the old works laptop back uh when i bought my laptop i thought all right okay i'm gonna try and experiment a bit um and i installed linux on it so i've got pop os which is a a distribution very similar to uh ubuntu uh it's a debian uh, uh, build and uh, uses a lot of the same sort of commands so particularly on a Linux operating system, there's a lot of problems to do with file permissions because the Docker environment runs in the same um, file system as the host machine. When you change permissions on uh, the Docker container, it actually changes them on the uh, actual machine as well, the host machine. So this problem, doesn't uh, happen on uh, Windows machines. So what I want to talk about is those sort of problems that I've had, uh, how, what I've found to overcome those particular problems, and um, what I can do then to run the machines in the right environment so that uh, I don't see those particular problems. So. One of the things that I can do is if I run a, a, a Docker container and I do change file permissions, 
then I can run uh, sudo uh, chrome commands and change it back so that um, it will reset the permissions. And there's an example there of how I can run it from my own personal account. So michael.michael .michael is my username and my group name, or you can do it programmatically by using the ID for user and the ID for group. So first of all, I wanna go through uh, a Docker Compose image. So we're dealing with uh, PHP here. So there's a Docker Compose image that you can download from Docker Hub. And they've got examples of how you can run that particular image. So they give two examples on their website. Uh, the first one is showing as a multi-line. So you're running the Docker image, you're removing it after it's been run, you run in interactive mode, you want to be able to use the terminal and the volume is the current working directory, the present working directory to the app folder within the container. The container is composer and you run in the install command on Composer within that container. So this can be written multiple ways. It can be written the long form way there, uh, showing the backslashes. And it can also be shortened with the abbreviation way, um, which is easier than if you wanted to copy and paste. And I've gone through the explanations of each of those commands. If you want to see them in more details, uh, there's links on the website to go to the actual documentation. The other way that uh, Docker actually recommends uh, in their documentation, sorry, uh, Composer actually recommend in their documentation is to run the same command. But here you can see that there's an extra line where you can actually run it as a particular user account. And it will automatically find the uh, user ID and the user group, and that will actually run within the container. So the comp composer container will actually run as the user, the same user accounts and the same group as the um, user of the PC, the host PC. Here's some examples as well of one line commands. So you can see how easily it is to just change the end command. So this one is the same as, as before. You can do a Docker update. And you may notice here that we got test, we got check CS and we got PHP stan. Now they're not regular Docker commands. So I'll show you an exa uh, example in, in a second. There are actually commands within the composer JSON file where you can actually run the, the script. So these scripts are within the J composer JSON file. So these scripts will be from the host PC. They'll be um, uh, mapped using the volume command to the Docker container, and they're available then to, do, to Composer within that particular container. The problem with the first way of uh, running the Docker command without the user is that it runs as the root user by default. This means that any commands that are run by Composer will automatically change the file permission to the root user. So any files or folders that are created are created by the root user. So then me as a, as a standard user on the PC hasn't got access to that. There is a way to overcome that by running the uh, chone command. The other example given by um, Composer, the Composer documentation, is to, um, sorry, the other problem with, with just running the um, Composer Docker container 
is that it doesn't always have the right extensions or the right version of PHP that you need to um, run the actual composer in command. So here I've got an example of Silver Stripe. Silver Stripe, Silver Stripe is a, a PHP uh, content management system. Um, so that is available on uh, my GitHub. You can clone it, you can change the directory once it's cloned, and you can run this Docker compose command to train install. But unfortunately, it will not work. You get lots of problems. And the main problem is to do with the extension international is not installed by default in the Docker container for Composer. So the way around this, uh, sorry, um, the other example here is our, the, contain, the, the Docker Composer container. Uh, when I did this particular blog, only went up to 7.4. So any uh, projects you're working on that were PHP 8 and above and weren't backwards compatible, when you run the Docker container, you would get uh, an error saying that you're running PHP 7.4 and you needed PHP 8. So there's, an, there's a couple of problems that you can have here. There are workarounds to these particular problems. One of the possible workarounds is documented on the Composer um, website you can actually install Composer programmatically. So you can pull the um, Docker uh, FAR file from their website and uh, run Composer setup. You still need PHP to be able to run these commands, but it can be run within a container that you've built yourself which have, has these extensions or has the right version of PHP that you want. So there are three suggestions given by a Composer on their Docker Hub documentation. There's an optimal way where you can actually pull the Docker image in to your own image. And I'll come to an example of that in a minute. The second way is an alternative way where you can actually specify which platform and which extensions you are actually going to be using in your particular project. And the third way, which is discouraged according to the documentation, is to use some flags. So you can use the ignore platform requirement flag um, although this is discouraged, it is probably one of the easiest ways. I'll go through the, some examples of how you can actually build your own Docker image and copy in the, cop the Composer uh, image from Dockerfile. So here is uh, an example of a silver stripe Docker image. And what I can do is create a Docker file, which builds from that particular image. And then using the commands to pull in Composer, it will copy the Composer directory from the Composer image into the uh, user bin Composer directory on the image that we have our Silver Stripe. There's a and you can also run additional commands like updating Docker, uh, updating Composer to the latest version, which is version two now. So to use that particular Docker uh, image, that, that Docker file, you can actually pull it, create a Docker Compose YAML file. And instead of using the image that um, Silverstripe one of the contributors to Silverstripe has, has built, you can do a build and build that particular Docker file 
the rest of the um, information in this Docker Compose is exactly the same as you would use normally. So you map the ports of the volumes, you can connect to your database, et cetera, et cetera. Once the Docker um, Compose YAML is created, then it's a case of running Docker Compose up D. So this will run in a daemon, so we'll run in the background. That'll spin up these particular containers and the silver stripe container will have Docker installed. So it can be accessed from the terminal within um, the container. So again, we can use the technique to run as the particular user, the user, the signed in user for the host machine can be passed to the silver stripe container that's been built in this particular uh, Docker Compose file. And within that container, we can run the Composer install. And that will install uh, correctly. So here's an example of how you would um, create a project with the files that you need to be able to use uh, Docker from the outset. Um, if I was going to create a Silver Stripe project from scratch, then the recommended uh, way to create that project is with Composer Create Project. But unfortunately, you haven't created the project because you haven't got the environment set up and you haven't created these YAML files and you haven't created your Docker file. So here's an example of how you can overcome that. So you can create, you can navigate into your working directory. You can make the uh, project directory. So here I would create a, a drop directory called Silver Stripe Demo. You'll change into that particular directory. And then you can create three uh, files, the Docker file, the Docker Compose YAML file, and a make file. And I'll come on to that in a minute, what a make file is. Then you can open PHP Storm, and that will open up this directory ready to start your um, build. Now you've created the uh, outline for your project. You've named your, your project uh, folder. That leaves me trying to explain what the, a make file is. So one of the advantages of a make file is that you can run these particular Docker compose commands, as you can saw, saw by the examples I gave earlier. They're going to be quite lengthy to copy and paste each time you want to run those particular commands. What a um, make file does is it allows you to run a single command called make, and you can call the key for the command that you want to run. So if I want to run Docker compose up build, with a detached mode or daemon mode. So this particular command, that's all I need to do is run make up. And it will automatically run the composer build up command for me. And these are other examples. As you can see, I can um, do the comp Docker compose up, I can do the Docker compose down, I can ex execute into the container which is used for the running container, or if I haven't got the running container, I can use the run command. Uh, I can also go into the um, shell of the container, so I can uh, have it work interactively with that container. I can also run those commands that I showed earlier, the test commands, the linting commands, and this allows a very easy way to be able to um, access those commands without having to copy and paste the, each time. So this basically is an easy way of running those standard Docker commands that you would need in a, in, in a um, environment on a regular basis. It also standardizes those commands so you can run, use the same commands across different environments. And I'll come on to that in a minute.
So if I want to run the Docker command, that's all I have to do is run make. I can shell in, use, use this shell run key, and I can access then the run in container. As you can see, it's mapped to the var www HTML directory. And if I run the doc, the composer version command, you can see that it is running version two. So this is within the Silverstripe container. It is working as expected. Now within, we're in that container. If I was to try and run the um, composer create command with a dot for the current directory, I'll still get another error. So this time the error I get is the directory that I'm trying to connect, create is not empty. We've created three files in that container. We can't create a brand new project in it. So this is another work around how you can overcome that. You're inside the container. We've got the environment roughly set up as we want it. All we need to do is start it up. So the way the Docker create command can use, we can create it into a temp directory. And that will create the, um, that will run the, the composer command. It'll pull down the uh, requirements. It'll create the build steps. Once it's built, then it's a case of moving that particular temp directory into the current working directory. And the list command then can list that particular contents. And we can see then that that's great. It has uh, connected these particular, this particular project and it has created it under user 1000, which is my standard user account, rather than user zero, which would have been uh, a root account. So it still left the temp directory there. So we don't need that anymore, it's now empty. This is a simple command. It's just a case of removing that temp directory and then we can exit out of the container. Once we're exited out of the container, then we can start the project. So this is a, the next step is to uh, run the compose app. Don't have to remember that long command now, that's all I have to do is run make up and that will run the command for me. And it'll automatically run it in detached mode as well, or daemon mode. Um, the ports that it was mapped to is mapped in the uh, Docker config file. And that will be localhost port 8081. Once it's built, it's a case of opening that browser Unfortunately, when you open that browser, you get another error message. Char mod operation not permitted. Fortunately, this is quite a regular uh, error message within Silver Stripe. The, um, the uh, public directory must be owned by the uh, Apache user. So this is... Um, www.data, um, which is also user account 3333. So it's a case of running make chown. So this is one of the make commands I've got. And what that does is it changes everything in the um, folder, everything in the directory where the project is back to my account. Okay, so this is uh, a, a quick test just to revert everything back and reset it back to how I want it. And then it's a case in the public directory to give um, the Apache user and the Apache data account access to be able to run it. Once we've done that, we can reopen the localhost account. And this time we do get the message that uh, the build was successful and, and uh, the uh, Silver Stripe CMS uh, has been successfully built.
now that it's been successfully built, we can log in. So we can log in as the admin account. So this has been set in the composer um, uh, file earlier. And we can see it's running in localhost 8081. The site is displaying uh, the default page for the CMS. We've got another example here of how you can do um, Docker with a node pro project. This particular um, blog that I use is uh, a project called uh, Hexo, which is a node project, and it creates a static site. So that can be hosted on GitHub. The requirements for Hexo are pretty straightforward. It needs Node.js and it needs Git. So nothing too uh, complicated there. Once you've got that particular environment, then um, Hexo CLI needs to be installed globally and or, or it can be installed as a project dependency. So instead of installing these uh, on my local machine, what I'm gonna do is install them within a Docker container. So the uh, setup instructions then are to run hexo init. So you've got hexo install globally. Uh, you can, for, for whichever folder you want to create the project in, uh, you can change directory into that folder and then you can run npn install. So this time the Docker plan is to create the project. We want to configure Docker to use node. We want to add uh, Hexo globally. We want to init the project. We want to add Hexo then as a project dependency and then reset any permissions just in case any, anything has been set as the root command, root user. So very similar to a Silverstripe project, we can start off our project. Uh, we make the Hexo demo directory we can change directory into the hexo demo directory. And then we only need to touch two files this time. We can touch the compose uh, the Docker compose YAML file, and we'll use our old friend, the make file, just to make things really easy to be able to use these Docker compose commands. And then we launch PHP Storm. So Docker, has a uh, node image. So this is the, uh, available from uh, the Docker Hub. Uh, so it's very easy to pull down a nice lightweight Alpine image of node 12. The services that need to be run, uh, I'll come on to in a minute and the generate command I'll come on to in a minute. Uh, very similar to um, the Silverstripe project. Uh, we want to have a working directory this time in the app folder within the container. And we want our current working volume, our current present working directory in the app volume. Um, the documentation for uh, Hexo advises that it will run on port 4000. So it's a case of just mapping through those ports. The make file you will notice is very similar to the Silverstripe make file. And this is deliberately designed that way. If I want to spin up a composer, um, spin up a Silverstripe project or spin up a, a, a Hexo project, then just running make up is the same in either of those projects. It keeps it nice and simple, keeps it consistent, whichever project I'm spinning up, whichever one that I want to go into to run the shell commands, it just makes it simple for me to be able to remember those particular commands. And you can see here, we've got uh, make, make shown. Again, that will just reset our root user. These are all available on the blog, so you can um, see those in more detail for yourself. So you can see there's a lot of similarities there. 
you may be wondering why we're using mode node 12 when there's node 14 out. Node 14 is the latest long-term uh, release for node. Uh, if you try installing um, Hexo in node 14, you actually can run into an error and they've called it a regression in node 14 error. Uh, the solution is straightforward, just use node 12. If I had other projects that I'd installed node 12 locally, then obviously this would be a problem. So this highlights one of the uh, big advantages of using Docker containers we can actually spin up the Docker container for the environments that we know the project will run in. So back on plan, we've got the um, Docker config file set up. Um, we've got our make file set up. So I now want to run the make command. This time I'm going to run it as root because I need to do the uh, npm install and install hexo globally. Um, but obviously that's gonna lead to problems. If I'm running commands globally, then it's gonna affect the local file system. Again, there's another simple solution to this. We can keep that particular um, node container running and we can create we can execute into that node container via another terminal. So here we can execute into that Docker, con Docker container. So in, um, the, in, the, in a sec separate tab, we've got open for the terminal we can run the docker ps command, which lists the running containers. We can have a look to see what the name of the running container is, and then we can pass the name of that running container in, and you can see how long the command is, it's even gone off screen, we can run the shell command. So once we run the shell command, we've got shell access within that docker container, but this time we're running as my user and my group. So interestingly, if you run the who am I within the container, it comes back as node. So when uh, node have actually built this particular container, they've given a user, uh, user 1000, the name node. Now we can run hexo init, init temp. So this is the same technique as we used to uh, uh, spin up the Silverstripe project. Uh, if we run hexo init dot and try and init a brand new project within the same folder, we'll get the same error as we had with the Silverstripe project. Uh, the, 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 the directory isn't empty. So we're gonna use exactly the same technique, spin it up and put it into a temporary directory. So once it's spun up, it's created that particular project and it's in the temp directory, we can change now back to our root user terminal and we can run the uh, update. Sorry, I missed a step. Here, when we run the it com in its command and we run it in the temp directory, we get a failure. The, it needs um, git and git isn't installed on the node container. So the solution to that is to spin back to our root user uh, in the second terminal and we can install um, git using uh, apt update apt add git and it's straightforward that one command will install it in the running container by the root user. Then we can strip, switch, switch uh, terminals again and switch back to our normal user account. And this time when we run hexo uh, init in the temp folder, it will successfully pull that from uh, GitHub and it will create the hexo blog. 
So the same as we did from Silverstripe, we can move the temp folder back into the current uh, folder. And as you see, instead of no, instead of user 1000, we can see that it's running as node and node as the user and the group. So don't be alarmed by this. This is something that's been configured by uh, node when they created their particular image. If we run um, the listing command against the temp folder, we can see that there's no files or folders in there. It's therefore safe to remove that particular temp folder. And we list again and the directory is empty. Now we can either yarn or we can um, npm install, whichever uh, you want to use, both are installed within the node uh, image. Importantly, we're still running within um, the standard user account. So as you can see, it'll fetch all the packages, it'll do all the builds, it'll create it and it'll be ready. Now that we've got the project all set up, it's in the right directory, which is the, 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 pre, the project directory. We can install YAR, we, we can install Hexo as a project dependency. Uh, by installing it as a project dependency, we then don't have to install it globally every single time we want to use this particular um, project. So again, it's straightforward, we're installing it under our normal user account and that installs without any, any, without any problems. We can now exit out of all of the terminals. So both terminals can be um, quit, can be exited. And if we run the, the Docker uh, PS command, it lists all the running containers, there are no running containers. Now, as, as a quick check, you can actually run the make chone command and that will reset the, um, uh, the, the uh, username and groups back to my standard user account. And if I do a listing command, then you can see everything's run and everything's under my account. That command, because we actually installed it under um, my user, user account, we didn't actually need to do but I'm just demonstrating how you can actually do that particular step. And it's literally a, a few seconds to run that particular command. Now the project is in the right folder, it's spun up, it's ready. We can run the make up command and we can open localhost 4000 and this will open up the Hexo project and you get a nice hello world image and it's ready for you to start blogging. Uh, all the instructions you need to start your own blog are all there. So to summarize, um, Docker obviously is extremely powerful. Um, it's extremely useful for spinning up the environments that we need to do our jobs um, and to give us the tools that we need to, for the projects that we're working on. For me on a Linux uh, environment, then file permissions are an absolute bane. But once we know how to overcome those particular problems, they are pretty straightforward to sort out. And by using um, tools like Docker Compose and Make, the project environment makes it so much easier for us to use. So thank you very much. That's the end of my talk. Cool, thank you, Michael. Um, yeah, I've hit some of those problems. I'm a fellow Linux laptop, Pop OS user. Yeah, I've run into the permissions problems quite recently on, on a project as well, which is you have to run chown commands, change the owner <laughs> back to me and everything. And things that typically I've reached for things like Lando and DDEV that are sort of pre-configured to sort of handle these things. But yeah, we really wanted to learn how to learn more about the underlying stuff and all of our environments in Beaker are all Docker based. So um, I don't see any 
questions? Does he anything in the chat? Does he anything in Slack? Uh, as an aside, I would definitely recommend blogging to everybody, um, especially even if you're just starting out. I wish I'd done more of it as I went and then just to act as a reference to yourself, really, but it would be useful for everybody else. Uh, I do blogging frequently. I'm at two of my most popular posts called analytics. One is checking out a particular committed subversion that I've not used for years and how to do some redirecting in Nginx, which is my main thing. But sometimes I've Googled for something and my own post has come up that I wrote five years ago <laughs> that I completely <laughs> forgotten about. So that's awesome. So yeah, I definitely recommend everybody to start blogging and or just make even notes somewhere uh, as well. So definitely take a look at Hexo. That looks quite interesting. Um, also, I'm a bit biased towards Drupal. <laughs> I do a lot of work with Drupal. Uh, Sculpin is, is another good one for static sites uh, for PHP. Uh, so that's, that's quite similar. Yeah, here's a Markdown file and some Twig templates. Build a static site, please. Definitely. Um, well, one one of the things that I interested me on on Hexo is is it's purely Markdown. It's a, a Node project, so it's very easy to to get access to. You can write all your information in Markdown. Uh, literally build it, publish it, and um, uh, GitHub will uh, host it for free. So it's all statically yeah. generated files. So you don't have to worry about any configs. You don't have to worry about setting up any servers. You don't have to worry about any PHP configs, anything. You just literally just push it to Docker, uh, pu yeah. push it to, 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 to uh, GitHub, and it's automatically published. So definitely. Yeah, Netlify I've, well. yeah, I've used as well to do something similar. Um, just satisfy hosting and, and Jamstack hosting. There's a question come in about uh, AWS ECS Fargate. Not familiar with uh, AWS. I don't know whether anybody in the chat is familiar with AWS. Not far. I don't know what Fargate is. It's something we can look into. And... Peter's just okay. pu pu published it to the chat. Um, hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So the Fargate, uh, it's a serverless for deploying images, Docker images. And they have a service, uh, ECR, uh, which is container registry. And it's the same as a Docker Hub. And, and the ECS inst uh, instances of uh, services and so on, they're creating a task using the images from the ECR. And my question is uh, more about the uh, packing the images. Uh, what is the good practice to um, creating the image? Do we need to insert the, the source code inside of the image or the source code should be mounted in a volume or something like that? Generally, you, you mount the volume to actually do production um, uh, work. Um, mm -hmm. To actually deploy, I believe you use the copy command. So you copy the source file to the destination directory within the container, and then you can publish. Yeah. So it should be in the container directly. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think you copy in all your files when you're building your image. And then if you're using something like Docker Compose locally to then add volumes on top of whatever files you're copying from us. And what about the dependencies? Do you think the dependencies should be installed after the running the, the entry point or something like that, or should be directly installed on a local machine and after then deploy it into the, yeah, integrate it into the image and after then deploy it into the whole image? Generally, when you're working locally, you want the tools that you want to be able to build the um, environment that you're, you're working on. Uh, when you're uh, deploying to production, you want an absolute minimalist build. So you want as little in there as possible mm -hmm. that can have a, a smaller attack surface as possible. So you strip out all your dev dependencies, really. And then you've just you've just got your production build only. Yeah, because Amazon is charging uh, for, for the storage and for, for the ECN instance. So if we install the, the whole dependencies and the vendors folder are there, 
they will charge more because they will, we will increase the, the volume on the image. Yeah, yeah. Norm, normally there's a build step where you would actually build the image and then that would pull in the dependencies that it needs to run your project rather than your dev dependencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you'd have it install, run, compose, install, whatever, but it builds Docker file. And then, yeah, you'd make sure, like what Mike was just saying, you wouldn't make sure you don't have de dev dependencies. So you wouldn't be shipping as a PHP unit in your production image, for example. Yeah. Um, I can find some, we've had uh, talks. So I think Peter Fisher did a talk for us a while ago about streamlining Docker images. I can find a link to that. They've got some slides somewhere. Um, and there's other, resources I can think of. I know Chris Fidel has done a whole course on shipping Docker. That's very good. Paul Redmond has done a, a Docker for PHP developers, which we raffled off once. Um, Chris Tankersley has done a lot of good Docker things. So I recommend taking a look at those. Um, yeah, for some ideas. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys.